Hello, this is Ibrahim Nassar with Ozen Engineering. Uh, today I'm going to show you an example of how to use the built-in array factor calculation within HFSS to perform different antenna array analysis. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use the ANSYS Electronic Desktop 2024R2 release and to create the antenna geometry to perform the single element pattern simulation I'm going to use basically the antenna design uh, toolkit that is built in also with the ANSYS electronic desktop so to use the antenna toolkit I can click on the automation menu tab here and click on show hide act extensions now it's, uh, you see the different toolkits uh, so we can click on the HFSS antenna toolkit here uh, the geometry I'm going to use for this simulation is a simple basically patch antenna. Let's select the, uh, the one that is rectangular with a prop fit. And here we can uh, select the center frequency. So let's for example select 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, the material of the substrate, let's change it to FR4 epoxy. And now if we click on synthesize, it will calculate the dimensions uh, needed to be able to operate at 2.4 gigahertz, uh, gigahertz center frequency. And I'm going basically to adjust a little bit the uh, substrate dimension. So let's increase it by 2 centimeters, 8.7. And the X and Y as well, 7.4. And if you click now finish, the toolkit basically will create the antenna geometry ready to simulate uh, even with different like uh, results reports to be able to look at the results in different ways okay now i'm going to close these act extensions to have a larger view and i'm going to expand this window so this is the geometry uh, as you see we cannot see the radiation air box the, because the toolkit uses a solution type uh, that uh, uses an auto open region so to change that we can select the hfss menu tab solution type and let's uncheck the auto open region option now i see the radiation air box so i'm going basically to select it and delete it and do some modification to the geometry before we do these simulations so these changes are really not necessarily uh, for this uh, example but i'm just going kind of to show uh, you also how do you kind of model periodicity and kind of emulating that there are other elements exist nearby this entire single element okay so I'm going to create a different air box and uh, in an easy way we can but basically just select the substrate air uh, box here and hit edit copy and edit right click edit paste and I'm going to change its dimension in the Z positive Z axis to increase it to, uh, to be about lambda over 4. So let's select 4 centimeters. And let's select uh, the object here. And we can quickly change the material here from FR4 epoxy to vacuum. And let's change also the transparency to 0.9. Okay. So now that we have this antenna geometry with the airbox defined, now I'm going to define a, a, a lattice pair uh, to emulate uh, the periodicity of this uh, unit cell. So to do that, I can right click and say selection mode and select faces. I can select this face and then I'm going to select the face in front. Control key and click on it. S right click, assign boundary, coupled lattice pair. Here we give it a name and here we can define uh, the scan angles uh, but let's keep it here uh, zero. So what this boundary basically is doing it's enforcing the electric field to be similar on both faces with a phase delay or phase difference that you define uh, uh, here. So let's keep it simple and just look at the broadside case so we can define uh, the scan angles to be zero and hit finish. Now I'm going to select uh, the sign the same boundary on the other two faces. So let's select this face, rotate the object and control key and select this face and right click, sign boundary, coupled, that spare. And same thing and let's keep the defaults. Now from the top surface, uh, I'm going to assign, uh, on the top surface, I'm going to assign the radiation boundary, right click, say assign boundary and radiation. So now we should have everything ready to simulate. So we have this uh, uh, perfect electric conductor assigned to the patch 
of the antenna and uh, here we don't need this boundary now because it PEC is the background material and it's surrounding the Teflon of the coax and the ground plane and here are the lattice pairs defined and on from the top radiation boundary here we have a wave port from the bottom okay uh, the solution setup got created at 2.4 gigahertz which is that what we need so let's keep just the defaults and the toolkit defined two frequency sweeps so we don't need really two just look at one to make it quick and here uh, it's an interpolating sweep so let's just reduce the frequency range to 1.4 and 3.4 gigahertz and let's increase the number of points to 201 okay now we can save it somewhere and then you can right click and say analyze all and it's gonna start to simulate okay while it's simulating uh, we can define an infinite sphere for the far field uh, results and so let's right click on radiation and insert the far field setup and let's select an infinite sphere uh, let's define the fee from 0 to 360 and the theta from minus 180 to 180 and let's just keep the defaults so here let's look at the convergence by right click on the analysis setup and select convergence so it's converged and now it's start to do the frequency sweeps okay now the simulation is done so we can double click on this report to look at the return loss so you see it operates near 2.4 gigahertz and now we can look at the far fields to do that we can right click on results and create a far field report and let's look at a 3d polar plot uh, let's select the directivity category and the directivity total quantity and the function to be db okay and we can click new report so this is the radiation pattern of the patch antenna which is as what we expect let's create also a radiation pattern plot and same thing let's select directivity directivity total quantity and the function to be db here we are going to be plotted at all the phi angles so let's just select the phi zero degree angle and hit new report okay so this is the radiation pattern of the patch antenna at phi zero which is the x-axis so let's add a marker here just to know what is the value here so we're getting about 7 db which is as what we expect now let's right click on this trace and hit copy data and right click then on the plot and say paste and i'm gonna call it no array factor so i did this so when we add an array factor we can see the change in the radiation pattern okay let's double click on now on the design <coughs> to be able to see the 3d modeler window and let's create an uh, antenna array to do that you can right click on radiation and say an antenna array antenna array setup and here you have three options the first one you use it if you don't want to define an array or if you have an array defined and you want to remove its impact from the far fields you select it the second one if you want to have a custom array setup and you just want to import it to here uh, to this uh, interface you can and the third one you can create it uh, using uh, the, 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 HFSS, the HFSS tool so let's select this option and let's click on array visibility so we can see the array elements how they are placed okay now let's define the array geometry um, so we have now the we define the center position and we have uh, you can define the directions and you different three layout types the rectangular elliptical and linear so let's select a linear one and let's define the vector of it to be at the x-axis so let's one and zero and zero and the center position to be zero here we define the design frequency so let's select 2.4 gigahertz and now you can define the size of the array and the spacing in terms of absolute dimensions or in terms of wavelengths so if we uncheck this we can define it now in physical dimensions so let's make the length spacing 8.7 basically same as the substrate uh, size along the x-axis and let's just have four elements to do that so we can have that number to be at 26.1 which is three times this number if we hit uh, 
apply we can see now the change so you see now that the uh, elements are presented with small spheres and they are different sizes because there are some array weighting applied here so to adjust that we can go to the array weight tab and here as you see we have different aperture taper for tapering functions so we can let's select uniform to make it simple and the scan condition let's uh, definition let's select look at just the broadside case for simplicity okay so now if we hit apply as you see we have four elements with equal phase and amplitude now if i hit ok the the far field data you see uh, will be updated and reflect the impact of this uh, uh, antenna array factor calculations so if we go now to the 3D polar plot, so you see now the, uh, the radiation pattern got changed to what we expect from the four elements along the x-axis. If we look at the radiation pattern plot, so you see now the gain went up to 13 dB, which is a 6 dB increase, and that's what we expect when we have four elements. Let's copy this trace as well and paste it here again just to be able to compare to when we create the array in a different way so this is let's call it array factor hfss okay now let's activate again this interface and um, uh, let's um, let's define the antenna array in in the other way which is bringing it basically from uh, importing it from a file so we can select again antenna array antenna array setup if we go to the array type, again here, if we again select no array setup, the impact on the far field will go away. Okay, so you see now we don't have uh, uh, an array factor uh, uh, calculation applied to this far fields. Okay, so now let's define an antenna array in another way. So the antenna array, antenna array setup, and let's select a custom array setup, and let's again click on visibility so we can see it. Here we can import uh, the array setup. So the HFSS takes the input as a text file. So let's click on uh, import if you already have the file or let's create one here in this example so we can um, uh, so we can show you how do you create it. So let's select a notepad uh, file. Okay. So here in this notepad file, basically, you, the first in the first row, you have to define the number of elements. So let's have four. And then you have to provide the x, y, z location of each element and the amplitude and phase. So the first element, let's make it at 0, 0. Then you give a space for the second entry and 0. Then let's have a 1 volt amplitude and a 0 degree. Now let's copy this and place it down so we have four rows now and the second one let's make it at 8.7 the second one would be at 17.4 and the third one the fourth one sorry it will be at 26.1 so if you don't you can if you don't provide dimensions here, HFSS will take the defaults, but you can also write it down. So HFSS uh, take it, takes it as you uh, put it in this file. So let's call this centimeter, centimeter, this is centimeter. Now we can save it. Let's call it like array two, place it somewhere. Okay. Now if we go to HFSS, we can import it. Okay, and hit open. And you can click on view definition to see it. So as you see here, we have it defined the X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate, amplitude and phase, and the number of cells. And as you see, it's reading the units. Okay, if we hit OK and hit apply. So now you see how the array is defined. Yeah, here we did not center it around the origin, but uh, that's fine. It's not going to show any difference in the far field data. So we hit OK. And now we go and look at the radiation pattern. As, as you see here, if we select this, trace and this trace the results will be identical as what we expect that's all for this video and thank you for watching